Hey everyone, welcome back to TK's Tech Talk. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to decide what laptop to buy based on what use you may have. And for me, the primary defining factor is price. Whenever people come to me, and I get this a lot, asking me what laptop should I buy, the first thing I ask them is how much do you want to spend? You need to have a budget in mind to try and understand what it is you want to spend on your laptop and what you wish to achieve for that price point. There's always going to be a trade-off, and I'm going to show you this by way of example. You can see I have two Asus ZenBook 14-inch laptops open on the screen, and I'm going to do a comparison between the two based on a similar price point and the different features you may get for that price and how the specs vary between the laptops. So I think the easiest way to do this is obviously by way of example, and that's why I have these two laptops open on ebuyer.com, and I just want to point out this is not... A sponsored video. I'm purely using eBuyer because I find it easy to navigate. This is a site primarily here for the UK users, uh, which is a good website for buying lots of electronic components based on computing. And I really do find it has an easy interface to navigate when you're looking for things like laptops based on price. So it has good filters for that, and it has a good selection of hardware that you can buy, not just laptops, whether it be computers, hardware components, or whatever it may be. So if you're using a different website to buy a laptop or browse a laptop or a PC even, it's going to be essentially a similar experience uh, based on the filters. And you have to find those filters. And it does uh, become a little bit cumbersome the first time. But once you get used to it, it becomes easy to navigate most websites for basing a laptop on price and then comparing the specifications. So what I like to do is open up two laptops that I find uh, in a similar price range, and obviously you might have more than two, but you'd start off by comparing two at a time and narrow it down to a particular model. So in this example, I have two Asus ZenBooks. Both are 14 inches, and they have some key differences. And I'm going to talk about the key differences, and I'm going to tell you how we can try and understand the difference between the specifications. So let's just start by reading the description, which will give us some basic ideas about the differences. So the first one is the Asus ZenBook Flip 14. So straight away we can see it's a two-in-one. It can flip 360 degrees to give you like a tablet experience and naturally implying that it has a touchscreen and it's a 14-inch laptop. Then we have a Ryzen 7, which is the CPU type. So in this case it's an AMD processor and it's called a Ryzen 7. So there's three types, well, there's typically three types which we will look at, and that is Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, and Ryzen 7. And of these three, Ryzen 7 is the most powerful. Then we have 16 GB and 512 GB. Now, if you don't know, if it's the first time you're buying a laptop and you don't know what that means, the lower number is usually the amount of RAM, and the amount of RAM defines how many applications can run at the same time. So if you have more demanding applications, they'd use more RAM, and you'd be able to have fewer applications open or more applications open based on how much RAM you have. So 16 GB is actually quite a decent amount of RAM to start with. And then you have the bigger number, which in this case is 512 GB SSD, it says. And that means that this is a solid state storage device. So it is a typically fast hard drive. And I would, re I would recommend make sure you're buying at minimum an SSD. We'll talk about types of SSDs. But at minimum, make sure you're buying a laptop with an SSD. I do feel this is a big defining factor for performance. And then again, it goes on to reiterate this 14 inch and Windows 10 Home. Now the Windows 10 edition does vary a little bit based on features. So if you want things like remote, des remote desktop access to your laptop or computer, then you're gonna have to go with Windows 10 Pro. If you're planning to use some advanced features like Hyper-V for virtualization or Windows Sandbox, you will have to go with the Windows 10 Pro Edition. Now, you, it's not to say you can't upgrade. It is quite expensive to upgrade from 10 to home. Yeah, I think it costs about 120 pounds in the UK and something similar in dollars in the US. And it may vary slightly based on the region that you're in. And it says, again, convertible laptop to reiterate this flip that we were talking about. It can become a tablet or use it in tent mode or something if you want to use it for better viewing a video or something like that. And let's have a look at the description of the other one, and that is the Asus ZenBook 14. So this time it's not a flip model. It does not flip. 
and it's a core i5. So with the Intel, we have i3, i5, and i7. And with the Ryzen, we have Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, and Ryzen 7. There are other models available, but I'm typically going to be looking at these if we're considering a cost constraint. We're not going to be looking at things like i9 or Xeon processors. And then we have 8 GB of RAM, so it has half the RAM of the first one we looked at, so it can run less applications simultaneously or have less browsers open, sorry, less tabs open in your Chrome browser, for example. We have the same 512 GB SSD. We have the same 14-inch screen, but it's not convertible. It's not touchscreen. We don't know yet whether it's a glossy or matte finish, and this is something to consider because if you're going to be using your laptop outside, you need to think about whether you want a glossy screen or whether you want a matte screen. Typically, the matte screen has much better viewing in sunlight. It doesn't have as much reflection as a glossy touchscreen. And this is indeed a Windows 10 Pro. So you can already see at similar prices at £869 and £886, they're very similarly priced and they're similar laptops, but with very different features and specifications. So let's talk a bit more in detail about specifications. And before I go way deep into specifications, I'm just going to talk about some of the key specs that they've highlighted here on this particular website. So here we have the Ryzen 7 3700U with a base clock speed of 2.3 gigahertz. I'll talk a bit more about this in a moment. And then we have Intel Core i5 10210U 1.6 gigahertz. And then we have the 16 GB RAM and 512 GB SSD and 8 GB RAM and 512 GB SSD, 14 inch full HD touch display and 14 inch full HD display. Then we have the AMD Radeon Vega 8 graphics card, which is typically ADM, AM, sorry, AMD's built in graphics card. And Intel will have something right like the Iris graphics card, even though it's not mentioned here, you will have some form of Intel graphics card in here, which will be comparable to this Radeon Vega 8 graphics chip. And then we have Windows 10 Home and Windows 10 Pro. And this model has a backlit keyboard. So if you're going to be using it in a dark environment, this is something to consider. Will you be able to read the keyboard in the dark? So the, again, you see straight away you're seeing that even though they're the same price and one might be faster or whatever it is, or have more RAM, you might have to go for the lower specs but with a backlit keyboard and Windows 10 Pro if these are your priorities. So this is how you will start by looking at the specifications or comparing prices of laptops in different price ranges. Now, I'm going to try and split this video up into multiple videos because even though I want to focus on price, I also want to try and demonstrate the difference between specifications at different price points. So in this video, I'm just going to compare two laptops. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about choosing a price range and then looking for laptops in that price range and comparing laptops within that price range. So otherwise, this video is going to become way too long and it's going to become hard to try and make it easy to understand or easy to follow. And I hope I don't go into too many technical details, though I do feel this is important, especially if you're a first time buyer and to try and give you the most value from this. Because I've noticed in other, in other YouTube videos that people just, you know, they just show you different laptop models and tell you what they're capable of and they don't really explain the specifications, which is really the confusing part of buying a laptop. And I think that if you're not looking into that much detail, those videos are fine. There's nothing wrong with that type of video. And if it suits your need, that's fine. And if you're looking for something more detailed, then that's what I'm trying to cover here. So let's scroll down a little bit and you will see we have lots of descriptions, which is the blurb from the manufacturer. And what I want to talk about is the technical specifications. So let's click technical specifications and let's scroll right down to the bottom for each of them because there's something else that I want to point out at this stage. And that is the weight of the laptop that you're looking to buy. So in this case, the one on the left is 1.6 kilograms and the one on the right is 1.15 kilograms. So if you're looking for something thin and light, the one on the right may appeal to you. And if you don't really care too much about weight and you want more functionality from your laptop, then you will go for the one on the left. So for me personally, I have a 15 inch laptop and I have a few 15 inch laptops to be honest, and I always carry a laptop bag. So Weight is not a big deal. My laptop probably weighs around two kilograms. It's a Dell Precision 5540, so it's a more business range laptop. But it has features like Thunderbolt 3, 
which I need. So I have chosen that laptop for my need at my price point. Right. So again, I'm going back into that whole price thing and comparing specifications at that price point. So I had a feature which is Thunderbolt 3 for my Thunderbolt docking station, for example. So I chose that. So now let's go a little bit more into the nitty gritty. I'm not going to go through all of the specifications. However, I am going to talk about some key things that you do need to know when choosing a laptop. So I'm not going to talk about things like color and firmware and things like that and security. But while we're on the point of security, if you're hoping to unlock your laptop with Windows Hello, that's what it's called, Windows Hello, allows you to quickly log into a laptop with either face recognition or fingerprint, amongst other things. But these are the two main things that I'm going to talk about. So I think you need to look for, so for example, on the left, you have a camera, which is IR camera with Windows Hello. And on the right-hand side, if we look for the camera, it does say IR. So both of these appear to have Windows Hello functionality. And you can look at that more on the manufacturer website if you need more information about whether it's supported or go into a shop. I highly recommend going into a shop, browsing around, and having a look at the different laptops, different sizes, different form factors, and see what exactly it is you're looking for. Right. So let's go on to the screen. So screen is definitely a main part of your laptop. You're going to be looking at the screen irrespective of what you're doing. So what do these screens have to offer? So let's have a look at the one on the left first. It says glossy. So remember I was talking about the glossy thing. And it has wide view and it has 100% sRGB color gamut. What does this mean? So for, even for me, this is something which is an advanced feature. But if you're looking for graphic design, this might be important to get color accuracy. So 100%, and I believe it's Adobe sRGB color. If you're using Adobe and you want to have matching colors, then this would be definitely a good display because it has a 100% sRGB. And there are many types of color formats available, DCPI3 and all, the, all those things. Um, but that will be something you need to look at based on your need. And then it says we have a nano edge display, a 14 inch LED backlit, and a full HD screen. Now, if you're looking to buy something like a 14, a 15, or a 13.3 inch laptop, I think full HD 1920 by 1080 is the sweet spot because you don't need to worry too much about visibility. Looking at 100% screen real estate in Windows, if you set it like that, you'll get nice readable text and everything will look nice, especially if you're watching like a full HD video. And if you have a 16 by 9 screen ratio, which this is talking about, you'll be able to see a full screen video if you're watching a YouTube 1080p video without any borders. And then it, this particular model talks about brightness, and it says 300 CDM per meter squared. So depending on how bright you want your screen to be, this is a number you need to look out for. Then on the right-hand side, we have a 14-inch LED backlit full HD 16 by 9. So typically, most of the things are the same. And the difference is anti-glare. So this time we have an anti-glare matte display. It doesn't have a glossy display. It will have better viewing in low light and it also has a nano edge display. So I think this one has the thinner bezels, but I don't think that's a big defining factor that you should be worried too much about when choosing either of these laptops. So let's have a look at wireless. So we both, they both have wireless cards. They have different standards. So this one has the Wi-Fi 6 compatibility. How do I know that? Because it has AX. AX is Wi-Fi 6. So you're going to get theoretically faster Wi-Fi if you have a router that supports AX. And on the left-hand side, you have up to AC. AC is Wi-Fi 5. And obviously, it will work on a Wi-Fi 6 router, but you just won't get the Wi-Fi 6 capability. Let's have a look at the battery. So both have a three-cell battery. One has a 45 watt, one has a 42 watt. So these are more or less similar. And if you're looking for extended battery life, then look for a bigger battery like a 65 watt hour or a 97 watt hour. And I think 97 watt hour is the biggest allowed on an airplane. So that's something to think about when you're buying these uh, laptops. Sorry, the capacity is 50 watts on the right hand side. So it has a larger battery capacity. It will last you longer, theoretically, based on your usage. Then we have connectivity. So we have headphone, microphone, USB 3.2 Gen 1, USB 3.0, USB C 3.2 Gen 1. And on the right hand side, we have a USB 3.1 Gen 2 
and the USB-C 3.1 Gen 2. So what does this Gen 1 and Gen 2 mean? So Gen 1 and Gen 2 typically refers to how fast your USB port will function. I will, I will leave this for another video, but typically a USB 3.1 Gen 2 allows 10 gigabits connection, and I can't remember 3.2 Gen 1, but I know for sure that 3.1 Gen 1 is 5 gigabits. So again, you're going to get different throughputs based on that. And if you're going to be using an external device which uses 10 gigabits, then that's something to look out for. Both have a micro SD slot, and this is very important because if you end up having a laptop with a smaller SSD or a HDD at 128 gigs, for example, how do you get your extra storage? Well, you can't just add another hard drive if you're not familiar with the internals of a laptop, and maybe the laptop doesn't support that. So this is definitely something to think about. Buying a 512 GB micro SD card is relatively cheap and gives you additional storage with a reasonable speed. Now, the one thing I want to talk about in the interfaces or connectivity is that neither of these feature a dedicated LAN port. Now, you might want a dedicated LAN port if you're if you, if you need that connecting to a router or a device for work, which requires that capability, and if you want to have much faster or uh, uninterrupted internet connectivity for gaming or whatever it may be, you might want to consider a LAN port, and neither of these thin and light laptops feature that. So you will obviously be looking at a slightly thicker laptop, maybe slightly heavier, if you wish to have that. So that's the core specifications outside of the CPU, RAM, and SSD, which we're going to talk about now. So let's start with the RAM. Now, this says on the left-hand side, we have 16 GB of soldered memory. So this typically says that this RAM is not expandable. Now, if you're happy expanding your RAM and happy sticking another module, this does not support it. However, if you're starting with 16 GB, it's not a big deal. And we have the RAM speed now. To be honest, guys, unless you're gaming or something like that or doing something high performance and hardcore, this is not a big deal, right? You will never notice the RAM difference, no matter what people tell you in videos, no matter what people tell you, uh, you know, in benchmarks and things like that, you won't really notice the big difference in the RAM speed. So let's have a look on the right-hand side. Uh, do we have any specific mentions? Yes, again, in this case, we have 8 GB LPDDR3 soldered memory. So you cannot upgrade this. So this is something to keep in mind. If you have an expandable slot, it's fine. But if you don't, and this is LPDDR SD, SD RAM, LPDDR3, sorry, and we had DDR4 RAM on the left-hand side. And again, guys, I just want to mention that you will not notice a massive difference in performance for your day-to-day -day tasks if you have LPDDR3 or DDR4. So LPDDR3 is typically lower voltage, low profile RAM, and that's why it's able to provide this low profile and thin laptop with 8 GBs of RAM in this case. So let's move on to the SSD. Now, there are many, many types of SSDs that you can have. And again, whether you're buying a laptop with a SATA or M.2 SSD or an M.2 SATA SSD, you may not typically notice the performance gain. However, what I would like to point out is both of these have NVMe PCI Express SSDs. So they are going to be much faster for data transfer and things like that than a typical SATA SSD. And a SATA SSD is the ones that might be referred to as 2.5 inch SSD because they look like a normal 2.5 inch drive inside the laptop and you can replace them easily as well, as well as PCI drives and they will be slower, and they are much slower if you're looking at the, the hardcore benchmarks. Uh, like I said, in typical day-to-day -day use, you probably won't notice the difference between the two. What does the X2 mean? Well, typically PCIe 3, and there is PCIe 4 now, the PCIe 3 has up to four lanes, and these drives are both two lanes, so they won't be able to get to the maximum PCIe uh, 3.0 X4. I'm not sure if either model supports that, and you can check that, and you can check uh, upgradability to PCIe 3.0 X4 for each laptop, and typically you will get something like 3,000 megs read and write on a PCIe X4, and I believe it's about 1,500 megabytes maximum per second 
on an X2. However, this does vary depending on the drive, and we don't know the manufacturer at this point of the drive, and that's not really very important to us when choosing the laptop to buy. But just note that it has a 5 Tor GB, and make sure you have SSD, everyone. I really do not recommend buying a HDD in this day and age, especially for the performance bottlenecks. I'm already at 20 minutes. I'm going to quickly talk about the CPU and then I'm going to end this video. And I am going to talk about it in some detail just so that you can see the key differences between CPUs when you're looking at what to buy. So on the left hand side, we have a AMD. So we have an AMD processor. On the right hand side, if we scroll up, we have an Intel processor. So again, we have the Ryzen 7, which of the three that I spoke of, the 3, 5, and 7, this is the highest model. And then we have on the right hand side, the i5, which is between the i3 and the i7. So let's talk about clock speed. So we have a base speed of 2.3 and 1.6. We have a turbo speed of 4.2 on the Intel and a 4 gigahertz on the AMD. And then we have a quad core on the AMD and a quad core on the Intel. And then we have some cache information. I'm not going to go too much in detail about that, but it provides a little bit of important improvement on performance based on how big your cache is. So these would typically be between 4 and 6 megabytes for this range of laptops. And of course, both support 64-bit because this is the thing in this day and age. Let's talk a little bit about the CPU numbering. How do you know what you're buying? How do you know how new it is? So just to give you an idea, for 2020, AMD is currently on fourth generation and Intel is currently on 10th generation. How do we know this? So this Ryzen 7 is a third generation that is depicted by the first number in this model number. And then we have 700U, which typically refers to the Ryzen 7 series. So we have a 3700U, and U is basically because we have a thin and light laptop. This is the series of the Ryzen processor that's being used inside this laptop. And similarly for the Intel, we have, it says here 10th gen, but if it doesn't say, the first two numbers here are 10 for 10th gen, and then we have 210U, for the i5, that's where the 210 comes from. And if it's a different speed, i5, it will have a different number. And again, same for the Ryzen. And then the U for the small form factor or the thin and light form factor. But how do we know which one performs better? So I'm going to go into a little bit, of, little bit of geeky details now. Not too much to confuse you, but just how to do a basic check. And just to get a basic idea, this is by no means telling you one is faster than the other but to get a basic idea of what will perform better in day-to-day -day tasks. So let's open a new tab. Let's go to Google. And let's just search 3700U benchmark. So this is going to give us a benchmark for the 3700U processor. So usually the first result is by a, comp by a company called CPU Benchmark. And if we click that, we're given a screen which talks about the benchmark for the 3700U. I'm going to do the same thing for the i5. So we have 10510U benchmark. And again, make sure you go to CPU benchmark link to do a similar comparison. And here you can see the comparisons of the two processors. So we have some power ratings, which we're not going to worry too much about, though, just to point out that if you have a higher TDP, it means that your laptop might use more power and run hotter. So let's talk about the graphics. So we have in this one, Vega graphics, which is typical for AMD. And then we have Intel UHD, which is typical for uh, Intel. If you go for a higher range, you'll get the Iris 630 and 650 and things like that. So we have a clock speed of 2.3 and 1.6, a turbo speed of 4 gigahertz and 4.2 gigahertz. And then we have four cores and eight threads on both. And what that means is, Again, like I explained earlier, is that you have four physical cores, each with two threads, and you will have eight threads for multitasking. So any application that's using multitasking or multi-threading will be able to make use of those additional threads for better performance across multiple cores or threads. And then we have the main thing that we need to look for. So we have a CPU mark, and this is on the same benchmark. If you look at the bottom, Performance v Test V9 and Performance Test V9, and the AMD, even though it's a older generation, like I said, the current is a fourth generation. And uh, um, this is a third generation, which is, I think, last year's model. And it still has a higher benchmark 
than the current i5. And I know they're not the same technologies, okay? But just to give you an idea, in this price point, again, this is all about the price. So for this price, for the same price devices, you will get theoretically a better performance in most cases with the AMD Ryzen 7. And I would highly recommend if you're looking at these specific two laptops and if you don't care too much about the backlit keyboard and the Windows 10 Pro and things like that, then I would recommend buying the Ryzen 7. Having said that, you will still get good performance from the i5 version and you'll get the additional benefits of the backlit keyboard and the Windows 10 Pro features if you require them and the Wi-Fi 6 if you require that, and that's when you would choose the i5 model. So there you have it, guys. We've looked at two different laptops, and just to quickly show you, if I go to the 510U benchmark, comparing to the third gen Ryzen, even the third gen Ryzen from last year is able to keep up with the current i7 equivalent CPU, in my opinion, and you know, that really says something. I know you might have seen a lot of these videos about AMD versus Intel, and this just shows, at least for today, in the current time, if you're buying a laptop, I have to say that in terms of performance, the AMD does have a slight edge, though it's not true in all cases because you still have the better clock speed and the lower uh, power, power consumption and things like that. So it's not just about comparing that number, but overall, you will get a very good performance for your money from the AMD. So let's just go back to both laptops. If I can get there, here we go. And just to finish, I just want to say that, you know, this, the, uh, like I said, the main idea of this was to actually try and compare two laptops at a similar price. And in the next video, I'll show you how to find a laptop within a certain price. I'm not sure exactly when that will be yet, but I really do hope that compared to other videos, you now have a better understanding of what are specifications, what do they mean. If there's something I've missed, if there's something you didn't like, I am very big on constructive criticism, and I really do value any feedback that you guys can provide. If you dislike the video, please tell me why you dislike the video, what I can do better, what I can explain better. I am really open to suggestions, and I really do want to give value to all you viewers, and that is my main aim. I don't have any affiliation with these websites or whatever websites you choose. I really just want to give you a true uh, user value or a watcher value, and I, I try to do that from all of my videos. You know, if you want, if you want to have a look at, I have another video which talks about buying uh, a laptop from a refurbished outlet, for like, for example, the Dell outlet, where you can buy something which is not brand new, but you still get very good value for money because you can buy a current laptop for a much better value. It gives you more for your money, right? And you still get things like the warranty and the peace of mind that you're looking for if you buy from a certified Dell outlet, for example, or any other uh, competitor who's doing that. So I really hope that this video answers a lot of questions that you may have around buying a laptop. And if you do like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe and hit the notifications for other videos. And please feel free to check out the other videos on my channel and provide any feedback that you feel valuable to me. I, like I said, again, I, I can't iterate enough. I really do want to provide you value, and that is the aim of my videos, to try and review things that other people might not review, which might provide value. And I appreciate your time. I know it's a long video. We're coming up to 30 minutes. And uh, thank you to anyone who stayed throughout the video to understand this. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you, or rather, you can hear me in the next video. Thank you for watching.